If you're watching this video, you have great internet on some regard versus the 4 billion people who have none. We forget, we get comfortable. We are okay, we got this, we got that. We are in the year 2024 almost around the corner and a lot of these places don't even have internet access. And as a result of that, it's easy to forget that half of the planet has no connectivity at all. And that's why we're launching two dedicated micro geos to connect the entire country of Mexico to fast and affordable internet. When we went to Mexico, there were a couple things we wanted to do. We definitely wanted to talk to our customer and just get to know them and see them, you know, in their office, meet them where they are in the country. We also wanted to meet our end users, the people who are actually going to benefit from the satellite service that we provide in Mexico. It's hard in general just because these people are living in a different country and they're far away from you physically in the world. They're also very far from you digitally. I mean, they don't have access to the internet, kind of by definition, these are the kinds of people who want to connect. And so we can't just email them. We actually have to go there and see them physically in order to really understand how they live. We started in Oaxaca and immediately went to farms, people who were growing and processing agave to make either mezcal or tequila. Before I even met Cesar, I knew about Madre Mezcal. I used to see this, this cool bottle and I was like, wow, this is a cool bottle. I like the presentation it has. We became friends after a while and it was like, wow, look, I'm here at Madre Mezcal. It was Cesar and his family owned this business. Mezcal and tequila production for Mexico are a huge business. It's a way of life, a livelihood, and the people who work on these farms and make these products have a lot of pride in it. Everybody took so much pride in the work that they do and everything that they do. They even have a tattoo of the agave on them. And, and he goes, oh, this is the company that I represent in Mezcal and they give me a job and they provide, you know, food for me and a roof over my family. And I really take pride in what I do. I just don't want to put a tattoo because I want to put it, but this is where it helps me. And, and we take pride in what we do here. I don't think I've ever seen so much agave in my life. Like you would drive by on the side of the road and there would just be agave literally growing like on the side of the street, like beyond the walls or beyond the fence of the place. We got to check out big commercial farms as well as small mom and pop farms where there was a smaller family usually running the farm and focused on growing and, and the actual procurement and processing of the agave. You know, everything they do, how they wake up early in the morning, in the evening, they work 12, 16 hours a day, weekends, seven days a week. It's third generations of working. They have their kids, grandkids, everybody working as a, as a big, big, big collaboration in a family. When we visited this one family, there wasn't actually any space at the farm for people to sleep. They had built these sort of huts, but the huts didn't have beds. They just had like straw mats that were laying on the floor. And there's only really room for two people. And so the men would stay overnight at the farm just to make sure everything was safe and no one would break in and steal livestock or crops or something. And the women had to go back into town and they actually stayed closer to the middle of town. That story stuck with me because they couldn't talk to each other. There's no way that you can wirelessly communicate with between the family that's living in town and the family that's living on the farm. That, that, that was crazy to me. Christina, one of our hosts, she had to drive out of town. Not that you even drive, you gotta walk sometimes. But she had to go really far just to try to get on her phone and try to get connectivity to talk on the phone and try to connect with someone else or family members in the States or even in, the, in say, Mexico. So by us providing internet access, astronomers to a lot of rural places like this in the mezcal business or tequila business, the resources will be very beneficial for them to expand their business to another level. After visiting Oaxaca, we flew to Guadalajara and, and drove a couple hours out from like the town proper. We visited a few schools out there and uh, we, we drove a long time before we got to a lot of these places. Just looking at this drone shot, just rotating and seeing that for miles and miles, as far as the eye can see, there's nothing. Every trip we go on so far, there's one commonality. Everyone likes the drone. I end up spending a lot of time flying it to get the shots we want to show the geography of the landscape we go to. And, and I'm never alone uh, when I'm filming that. With the minimum resources that some of these schools that we attended and that we visited, some of them had a projector, yes, and they had an old computer, and they show videos and pictures to kids, but now all the time the internet works. There actually were some that had Wi-Fi hotspots at the school, and that was really interesting because you got to see what would internet do for these communities. And the answer was multifaceted. It wasn't just that you saw students connecting to the internet to do lesson plans and stuff. You also saw the parents of those students come and hang out outside the school, and they're all sitting there on their phones, like browsing the internet right outside where their kids are going to to school. Because the parents are there, all of a sudden there's these other vendors that come by. So there was like an ice cream rolly truck. Something that is very obvious, like connecting students at a school, sure. But it leads to all these secondary and tertiary effects of, you know, now the parents are there, now the vendors are there, like so all of a sudden it's a center for like commerce and social activity in town. Nearby there was this small medical station far away from Guadalajara and, you know, all of their records are digital and online. And sometimes they just can't access them due to the quality of the internet access they have today. Yet, they're still paying a lot for that access. 
I love this uh, this B roll we got of Jose getting uh, getting checked out by the nurse, making sure his, his vitals and his, his blood pressure is okay. You know, sometimes you just gotta use your own your own folks to get get B roll. <laughs> Next, we went to a town called Matitan. They have canyons, and these canyons are really steep and rural. They have no connectivity whatsoever. It is hard to connect an entire country. I mean, especially when the country is as diverse as Mexico. There are mountains, there are deserts. Mexico is super high elevation. Basically, the entire country is as high or higher than Salt Lake City. Like, it's just a very mountainous country, and people don't appreciate that um, until you're, like, dehydrated. <laughs> as a result, it's it's really hard to get traditional fiber lines drawn out to different places. That's why a geo solution like what we're building with the Astronus is great for a place like Mexico. Instead of having to deploy infrastructure to all these individual places and then to connect it all with fiber, and instead you're just putting up one satellite, that one satellite is talking to one dish on the ground. Most of the places we went, they did have dishes on their house, they were just dishes for satellite TV. It was just that they had never connected those to the internet, there wasn't enough capacity to serve them. This is a technology people are already sort of used to, it's just going to be it for this new thing, which is internet. I never thought I'd see as much agave in one day in my life uh, as I saw in Oaxaca. And then we went to Matitan and I was completely, completely wrong. While we were in Amakitan, my brain was either thinking about how beautiful of a place this is or laughing at how scared Christian was of the drive, of the drive down into the valley. <laughs> the drive. Uh, I'm like a nervous person sort of generally, and that was a nerve wracking trip. To be fair, it was, it was sort of sketchy. We got stuck like twice. At one point, we literally did like run into a rock. <laughs> So they had to build a small bridge to connect from Amatitan to go to the city. The problem was before they had this bridge, the kids had to go through the bushes and everything. And some of them got bitten by scorpions or snakes because they didn't have the access to get from the village to the city. And when it rained, it got really, really bad there. I mean, really bad. They told stories about how they were just trapped down there because of floods. Like the one way that you could get up was kind of like flooded out. They have a limited water supply. They get all their supplies from the outside world driving in on that road to, to get to them. And when they were flooded, they couldn't get help. They were stuck there for weeks. They only had one hour a day of water and they had to save as much water as they could because they were afraid if something would happen or, or a hurricane or rock slide, anything in their nature, they had to preserve all anything that they had, their resources, water or food. The internet is not just for education, connectivity, information. It's also for access to emergency services. It is like striking to think that like, yeah, if you, if you get stuck there, there's no internet connection. There's no cell, you're not getting health. In case of an emergency, we say, hey, let me call 911 from my phone. You know, we have all those resources here, but in the places we went to, they don't have that. All this footage is not shot by another company. It's not stock footage. We go and film it ourselves to try to understand and put ourselves in the shoes of our, of our end users and, and share that story with the world. Who are these different types of folks who live in Mexico? What are these different states like? What makes the north of this country different from the south of the country? How do we make sure that one solution, one satellite can cover all those people? And so we can't just email them or have a chat thread. We actually have to go there in person to see how they're living their lives and what their lives are like. It's easy to forget that it's not just about connecting the world to the internet. It's a two-way street. It's also about connecting the other half of the world to us. A whole half of our planet just isn't connected, isn't getting to share their reality, their stories, them themselves with the world. I come from a less developed country because we don't have a lot of means that we have for connectivity like we have here in the States. So I'm very grateful for the work that we're doing and seeing all the, all the dedication everybody puts here behind the scenes. And Astronus for building a solution that checks all those boxes. It's fast, it's affordable, it covers a massive area and gets people online and connected. Our services will provide a lot of these people in rural places and schools, hospitals, to connect with the world. Once we go in there and we provide all these services, we're gonna better the world for a lot of people.